In this video, we're going to analyze the 4K Blu-ray of Blade Runner 2049 and talk about a big problem of an HDR presentation that looks just like SDR. Hello everyone, Vicentio from HDTV Test here. I hold in my hand a UK copy of Blade Runner 2049, the 4K Blu-ray version, and we're going to analyze it using a Canon DPV3120 which I have been testing recently. So this is a reference grade broadcast monitor, LCD panel capable of 2000 nits of peak brightness. But what is cool about this monitor is that there is an inbuilt HDR analysis function. Canon calls it HDR toolkit. It is award winning. And you can analyze various parameters of the content that you feed to the display. So for example here, I have at the top left corner a frame luminance monitor. So this will track and jot down the maximum luminance or max CLL. Essentially peak means max CLL. So max CLL is maximum content light level. And then inside the brackets is the maximum that has been recorded throughout the duration until you press the reset button. And then the average would be the max FALL or maximum frame average light level. Again, you know, the bracketed figure would be the maximum that has been recorded throughout a duration. And then at the bottom left corner, you can see a waveform and with this waveform, it is more precise than the Atomos Ninja waveform that I've been using previously for my HDR analysis of 4K Blu-ray movies. So you can see it is divided into 50, 100, 200, 400, and up to 10,000 nits of peak brightness. So let's put in, you know, Blade Runner 2049 because this is one of the movies that has been requested when I last did my HDR analysis of say Mad Max Fury Road and maybe my colleague Adam Fairclough did the analysis of the Rise of the Skywalker. So Blade Runner 2049 is essentially an SDR movie in an HDR container in a nutshell. So if you look at these scenes here, even with the sun shining through the leaves, you don't get a peak brightness more than 200 nits. And in this scene where there is bright holographic lights throughout the city, again, the maximum peak brightness does not exceed 200 nits at all. And I think the highest peak brightness that I've recorded from this movie is during the opening Sony Columbia logos where the peak brightness or max CLL briefly jumped to 330 nits and then in a later shot it reached 330 nits very briefly but the vast majority of the movie is below 200 nits in terms of the peak brightness so because I have two LG 48 inch C10 or CX OLED TV here. So I thought I would do an experiment and put the 4K Blu-ray disc on one LG C10 fed through an Oppo 203 player playing it in 4K HDR obviously. And the other LG CX I'm playing through another Oppo 203 displaying the SDR Blu-ray. And as you can see, you know, shot for shot, you know, they look visually similar between the HDR and SDR. So essentially, this film is an SDR movie in an HDR container. And here's the thing, you know, when I discussed, let's say, The Mandalorian, which was below 300 nits, and let's say when I discussed the Star Wars movie, which I thought was upscale from SDR in terms of the waveform analysis, I think, you know, I received a lot of criticism from some of you guys and maybe even some colorists out there who says that, you know, I'm really not respecting the creator's intent, which I think, you know, it's not fair because, you know me, you know, being a video file, being someone who values color accuracy, values video fidelity, you know, I'm all for creative intent. But 
I think you know to put an SDR movie in an HDR container and to try to sell it as HDR is a bit misleading. You know the studios or the DPs or the directors if they are so anti HDR and Roger Dickens, who was the DP for Blade Runner twenty forty nine, is famously against HDR. He doesn't like HDR, so you can understand the SDR like great. But I think you know if you want to maintain creative intent, you know you can easily put out some content, maybe through streaming or whatever, you know, label it as SDR rather than you know force. It as HDR. Obviously, they can charge more money, and maybe that's the whole point, you know. But I think it is a bit misleading. I think when I did my videos criticizing the Mandalorian and also maybe Star Wars, there was a guy in the industry who wrote to me and said that, you know, HDR is just a range, right? And obviously, it is up to the DP and the colorist and the director to decide, you know, whether to utilize the entire range. And the analogy that he used was that you know we won't criticize, let's say, a black and white movie, even though it is within a Rec. Seven Hundred Nine container. And to a certain extent, I agree. But I put it to you like this: Let's say the artist, which was black and white, right? It was in a Rec. Seven Hundred Nine container, but it was not sold as a color movie. If you get what I mean, you know it is sold as a black and white movie. It was advertised, marketed as a black and white movie. Whereas, you know, on Blade Runner twenty forty nine, right, you have this label on the disc here, really, really big. I don't know whether you can see it from the camera because of the focusing and stuff. You know, I'll try to put it as close to my face as possible, so you can see HDR high dynamic range. So to put SDR in an HDR container when putting out An SDR disc, or maybe, you know, an SDR stream can do the same job. Now I'm using this LG CX. You know, I'm going to show you that with the HDR version, even though the SDR and the HDR versions they are visually similar in terms of the dynamic range, you can see that with the HDR version, the OLED light, the contrast is pushed up to maximum because that's necessary for the tone mapping. Of the content, and also if you go into the gamma, gamma is locked out at two point two. You can't change the EOTF. You can't compensate for a brighter viewing environment. Now, obviously, you know if you are watching HDR in a brighter environment, you are doing it wrong. But let's say if you watch the SDR version, you know there's still headroom. You know you are getting the same image as the HDR, but there is still headroom. You can still increase the OLED light. You can still bump up the gamma to brighten the image to compensate for any ambient lighting. Or let's say you know you think that the TV is too dark. Obviously, you know this is deviating from the creator's intent, but there is still headroom. That's what I'm trying to say. And with the HDR version, you are basically asking the HDR TV to pump out more light just to produce visually similar image in terms of the dynamic range as the SDR version, which uses less energy, less power. I think it is misleading. You know, it is not showcasing what HDR is all about. You know, many people buy HDR televisions. You know, they go home, and you know, they buy a shiny Blu-ray disc. You know, Blade Runner twenty forty nine. They read a few reviews saying that it's reference great. You know, fantastic Atmos soundtrack, beautiful cinematography, and then take it back, and then it's just dim as hell because of the tone mapping of the display, and. I think I've used the term fake HDR before to describe this, and you know I got blasted for it, which is why you know I have this jacket on, you know, while filming this. You know, it is basically flame proof, and this SDR in HDR container type movie. Why can't I call them fake HDR? But you know, if you have any dispute in the terminology, then maybe we could use, let's say, subdued HDR grade. You know, or hocus pocus HDR. I don't know. You know, give me some suggestions of what we should call this type of movies. You know, which is basically SDR in an HDR container, which is visually indistinguishable from SDR in terms of the dynamic range. So I would be interested in your thoughts. And you know, coming back to the point of creative intent again, right? 
So let's say Roger Deakins and Danny Villeneuve, they want this to be really dim and dark. There's that freedom from any criticism in terms of the grade they could easily have put out just to Blu-ray this. It's just like me, you know, saying that, let's say, you know, currently I have extremely good lighting on my face, right? But, you know, my creative intent, right? My creative intent is for this to happen, right? I'll switch off the lights here. So I've switched off the lights here, right? And this is my creative intent. Obviously, you know, you can respect my creative intent, but most of you would probably just turn away, unsubscribe from me, unless some of you like my voice for ASMR purposes. But I would lose a ton of subscribers, you know, for creative intent. And I suggest that, yes, you can respect creative intent. You can respect, right, let me turn on the lights first. So yes, as I was saying, you know, you can respect creative intent, but vote with your money, right? Don't buy discs that are clearly SDR in HDR container, unless there is some specific special features, some behind the scenes or a fantastic soundtrack that is not found on the Blu-ray disc, because you can get a Blu-ray disc and get a similar result, you know, for this type of disc. And I think, you know, you have to comb through reviews and maybe depend on a reliable source to point out, you know, which disc you should spend your money on. Vote with your money, you know, don't give this, you know, people an excuse to charge more for essentially the same product. There are fantastic discs out there, 4K Blu-ray movies, that make full use of HDR, high dynamic range, white color gamut, that deserves your money, your hard-earned money. And I think, you know, you need to be picky and invest in those discs and, you know, really vote with your money and say that, you know, even though you respect creative intent, you know, it is not on selling an SDR movie as HDR, basically. If you found this video useful, please click the like button and subscribe to the HDTV Test YouTube channel for more videos like this. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.